Like most local governments, the city of Clearwater is laying off workers, shutting down services, and turning the lights off to balance the budget. But here's something Clearwater is not doing to battle its budget crunch. Collecting fines. Private landowners owe the city millions of dollars. And as Mark Douglas uncovered in this 8 on Your Side investigation, one of the biggest debtors of all is also the city's best-known landowner. Hard times are forcing the city of Clearwater to cut dozens of jobs, reduce library hours, shut down a rec center, raise the tax rate, and for a brief period, the city even stopped flying the stars and stripes to save a few dollars. But we found a pile of money that could buy the city a whole lot of flags and fly them too. $3.4 million. That's how much Clearwater property owners owe taxpayers for code violations. City policy turns those fines into real estate liens, but the city seldom takes people to court, which basically means no one really has to pay unless they sell their land. Our main focus always with fines is to get people to come into compliance. Secondly, to get revenue. We discovered the city's four largest code violators have neither complied nor paid. City records show one homeowner owes more than $200,000 for shoddy conditions at his house. Another owes $290,000 for an illegal deck. And Natalie Howard owes $261,000 for a trailer full of junk she had in her front yard. The city is still fining her $300 a day. Do you have that kind of money? I only have $2. Well, good luck with that. But consider this one. The Church of Scientology, downtown Clearwater's biggest private landowner, owes taxpayers more than $287,000, a fine that grows by $250 a day, a debt that started in 2006, and the city is in no rush to collect. Why isn't the city collecting from the Church of Scientology? Well, right now the meter is still running on those fines. And until the meter stops and they come into compliance, we don't know how much they owe. And this is why the church owes taxpayers $287,000 in the first place. Five years ago, construction work halted on the church's new center for Scientology training. In 2006, the city began fining the church $250 a day for failing to finish the exterior shell. Work resumed this year, but it's still not done. If they don't owe the money, you know... Leave them alone. If they owe the money, make them pay it. Clearwater businessman Herb Quintero knows all about city fines. Last year, the city called the fish mural on his tackle shop an illegal sign, took him to court, and made him pay pronto. We uh, paid $690 in fines. Uh, We had 30 days to cover the mural or get rid of it. Quintero fought back in federal court and won. Now he wonders why the same city that prosecuted him for painted fish won't make Scientology pay fines amounting to more than 400 times as much. Everybody should have to pay the fines that are imposed on them. Um, It is, you know, disturbing that my fines only amounted to $690 and I went to criminal court to have to pay them. Clearwater Mayor Frank Hibbard says he personally met with Scientology leader David Miscavige more than a year ago. I've made that known to their leadership that we expect those fines to be paid in full. The mayor says as far as he's concerned, those fines are due just as soon as workers finish the exterior in about four to six weeks. In the end, do you think the city will have any luck collecting from the Church of Scientology? I do. I'm hopeful. The church says it intends to pay, but has to resolve several matters with the Code Enforcement Board first. Collecting fines from the Church of Scientology, Natalie Howard, or anyone else won't solve Clearwater's budget crisis, but it could help keep the colors flying. In Clearwater, I'm Mark Douglas, News Channel 8. Sometimes Clearwater's practice of getting tough as a way of backfiring. Nine years ago, deputies arrested a pregnant mom for overdue book fines at the Clearwater Library. After the expected mom walked out of the jail under the glare of news cameras, the city softened its stance on library fines. For more on this story and a database of code violation liens, go to TBO.com and look under keywords Clearwater Fines.